Hello, families. Um, we're going to begin today um, with the letter C. As we warm up, I'd like to begin each activity with some phonemic awareness. As I mentioned in the first video, we want to be thinking about how our auditory um, listening skills help us to become fluent readers. So the first thing I would like to do is um, think about beginning sounds. So we're going to be frequently looking at um, blending beginning sounds, middle sounds, and the final sounds that we hear to read words. So it's good practice as we hear, as we listen, to identify the beginning sounds and um, to know which letters we can distinguish from other um, letter sounds as we hear them in a list of words. So I'm going to say three words, and two of them start with the same sound. One of them starts with a different sound. I want you to tell me which one is not like the others. So here's an example. Baby, bottle, pacifier. Baby, bottle, pacifier. So which one is not like the others? Okay. Baby and bottle start with a b, b, but pacifier starts with p, p. So pacifier is not like the others. The answer is pacifier. So let's try some others. Cat, cone, rock. I'll repeat. Cat, cone, rock. Which word doesn't belong? Cat, cone, rock. And you might want to pause here if you haven't been able to think of it. The answer is rock. Cat and cone begin with k, k, the C sound, that hard C. And rock begins with r, r, the R sound. Piano, up, park. Piano, up, park. Which word doesn't belong? Piano, up, park. You might want to pause. And it is up because piano and park begin with p, p, p and up begins with a, uh, a. Uh. Okay, let's try one more set. Fish, house, happy. Fish, house, happy. Might want to pause. It's happy. Oh, no, fish. <laughs> so fish is not the right sound. House and happy begin with H. I told you in those first uh, videos that I would probably make lots of mistakes. That's what I do with the kids. So that's the way it is. All right. So let's get into our um, the meat of what we're doing today, and that's the letter C. So if we take a look at our screen, we're going to be looking at the letter C, which um, the adults at home may know begins, it does make two sounds, but we're focusing on the hard C that makes that k, k sound like the letter K. So boys and girls at home, as you're watching, I need you to be calm. So sit in a nice calm place, take a deep breath and maybe a rainbow breath. There we go. And let's take a look Oftentimes you'll see, hear me say, eyes on me. When I say eyes on me, I want you to look at the screen because you don't have me or your teacher in front of you right now to say that. So look at the screen and you'll be looking at um, the either the letter or you'll be looking at me, some, me sometimes making the sounds. In three, two, one, we're going to begin a new concept and we're going to be thinking about the k -k sound. So let's take a look at this and read. Here we go. Carl's cat 
loves crispy, crunchy carrots. So look at all of those C sounds. K Carl, K cat, K crispy, K crunchy, K carrots. I have one that I want you to listen to. It's not on the screen right now, but see if you can think of the k sounds that you hear in this sentence. Crispy, crunchy cookies can crumble. Awesome. All right, so now we're looking at the letter C. The spotlight is on that letter. So when we have those cards that I showed last week, I would hold these up. I would say eyes on me. And the children would respond when I hold up the letter and say C. C says K. All right, so here's our letter C. When we're doing our lowercase c, we're going to start at that middle line, little in the middle, little lot, letter start in the middle, and we curve around to make the C. All right, when we're looking at the alphabet, it's the third letter in the alphabet, A, B, C. Now, boys and girls, it's also important to know which letters are vowels and consonants. There are five vowels. And um, one way that you can remember is think of them in a song. A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U. These are the vowels. All of the other letters are called consonants. So it's an important vocabulary word to learn. Vowels A, E, I, O, U, and the other letters are all consonants. So at this point, we're going to do a little brainstorming. So you can see that picture that's on the screen. It's a picture of candy. Candy. Now, this is something you might want to do at home is do a little brainstorming. So I have some objects that I found in my house that begin with the letter C. I have a k -k candle. I have a k -k camera. I have k -k cards. I have a k -k cup and I have k -k cotton. Now this would be fun if you had cotton balls and you could shape it into your own letter C. It's kind of hard to do that in the air, but you could put it on the table. You could even glue it onto something and make your own letter C. So boys and girls, you may want to pause the video now and think about going around your house and finding some objects. And we know that objects, we call those nouns, could be a person, place, thing, or an animal that begins with k, k, c. So boys and girls, if you're with grandma and grandpa or your aunts or uncles visiting, you might grab a k, k, cousin and bring them into the room. All right, so let's take a look at this picture. Back where we were here, we've got our candy, k -k candy. All right, so we're looking for k -k C. Now, at this point in at school, we would be brainstorming these together, but we don't have that luxury of having this here at school. So I'm going to just hide myself and I'm pulling aside some objects that I found, some pictures. So maybe the things that you brought to, um, to, to join us, those things that begin with k -k 
see might be similar to the things that I'm putting out here. So just as I showed you just a moment ago, I had a cup. Here's a cone. Here is some k -k candy. <gasps> mm, a birthday k -k cake. K -k carrots. And a k -k car. All right, so let's take a look at all of those again. I want you to pause right now and I want you to point to the objects that you see and say them. Cup, candy, cone, cake, carrot, car. Now, this is where I want you to be doing the writing yourself. So let's build a C together with crunchy cookies. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, so as we build this letter, the cookies are going to show you how to make a C. And I want you to make a C in the air as it's writing. So here we go. So where we start and we curve around and we have our letter C. I want you to trace that up in the air. Okay, now I want you to trace it on a table. Now trace it on your arm. Good. So boys and girls, practice writing your C's. You can write them on paper. You might want to write them in sidewalk chalk outside. Or you could even, what a fun thing that we do at school sometimes is we get our, we get some paint brushes and we don't get paint, we just get water and go outside and write the letters on the sidewalk. So think of fun ways that you could write the letter C for practice. All right, so let's take a look at forming the letter C on paper. So first I want you to just practice writing the letter C, but then we're gonna be thinking about how we write that letter by using the paper. So this red house paper that we use, right in between these two lines, we have our house. This is where we stay in our house, okay? Down below that line is our basement. Some letters dig down deep into the basement and other letters start way up at the tippy top. And this part of the house is called the attic. So some of the letters start up here at the tippy top of the attic, but the lowercase c starts in the middle, a little in the middle. And we're going to make start a little below that line and curve around, whoops, but not all the way back to the top. We'll do that with the next letter O. So now you practice. You can trace it on the screen if you want to and follow along with my spotlight. You can trace on the ground or in the air. Now I'm gonna, for the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to push escape because I can't show you something that I wanted to here without using the, um, I have to use some objects and I can't use them when I have them in present mode. So boys and girls, when we're writing, one of the things we want to be aware of is that in between each letter as we're practicing, write, practicing writing our letters, we want to have some finger space. So we're going to take our finger, it's a little hard to show with this here, here we go. As we write the letter, we write our letter C, we put the other finger that we're using. So boys and girls, if you write with the right hand, this is what you're gonna be using. This pretend this is your pencil. And the other hand will put your finger down to write or to put the space in. And then when you found your new spot to start writing, you can move this finger out of the way and start your letter C. Let's see if I can show you there with the pen. Here we go. So we're going to write our letter C. Okay, so let me erase that one. And if you write with your left hand, you will use, this is your left hand over here. So you would be practicing your writing. 
Here's your writing your C's. Oh, now we need a finger space. So we're gonna put our right hand, our other hand in that we're not writing with. We're gonna do the same thing, but it's, a little, it's on the other side. We'll put our space in. So now I have my space. That's where I know I'm gonna, I'm not gonna write on my finger. No, I'm gonna write over here. So now that I know where I'm gonna put my space, which is right here, I'm going to move this hand out of the way and I'm going to write. Here we go. And I'm writing with my left hand. All right, so boys and girls, finger spacing, very important when we're doing our writing. All right, so back up to here with our pointer. Here we go. So when I say finger space, that's what that means. So we'll practice again writing that C. Here we go. Whoops. Finger space. And we're going to write the letter C again. There we go. All right. So here we have the big C's. This is the big paper. It's a little larger for when you're first practicing writing your letters. As you become a little better, you'll begin to write a little slower or smaller, and you'll be able to use this, this paper, which is a little bit smaller, but it does the same thing. We still have the attic, the house, and the basement. Now, at this point, I'm going to pause, and you are going to write in sand. But it doesn't have to be sand. In the video that I'm going to put in here, in this place, you will see that um, you could use table salt. You could use shaving cream. You could just write on the table, but it's important to use your fingers and write the letters and practice. So listen to the video that you'll see next here. And writing in the sand or writing on the table or using other modes of touch, such as maybe um, with or shaving cream on the surface of a counter and writing letters in that will help your child connect um, from the fingertips to the to the brain and and it helps to um, help the synapses grow and make more connections with um, the letters and the sounds. So in front of me, I have some sand. This is. Um, it's called sensational sand, and you do not need to go out and purchase anything like this. If you have sand at home, you know, maybe from a sandbox, you could use that. You could use table salt. Um, uh, mine is just a special kind that we had purchased to use um, here at school. And even when we go back to school, we won't be able to use this. So um, my hope is that when we share these videos with you, you'll be able to have something at home that you can do with your child to reinforce writing the letters and saying the sounds with those letters. Um, so hopefully you can uh, uh, find a way to make this work in your home environment. And then even if we do go back to school, for those who are in the program where we go back to school, um, you can do this at home for reinforcement. So we, since we won't be able to use the sand here due to sanitation reasons. And of course, those of you who are in the online program all year, this will be something that will benefit you through this um, process as well. So when we do the letters practice, I usually let the kids take a moment to play in the sand because obviously this is um, something that kids love to do. Kids love to play and through playing, we can establish learning. So allow them a couple of minutes just to play in the sand and to, to draw pictures, do something um, that makes them feel that they can get that energy out. And then you tell them that now the sand is a tool. This is a tool to help you learn. And from this point on, when Mrs. Burning is sharing information on the videos, um, it's time for us to be listening. So, I usually um, tell the kids, they don't even have to lift it up, just shake this out to get it um, clean or um, to get it cleared for the next letter that you're going to share. When I do this, I always tell the children, eyes on me. However, since I'm sharing this with you um, and showing you the way it's done from a different viewpoint, um, when I say eyes on me, what they'll be doing is looking up at the screen and listening to my voice. 
So, boys and girls, eyes on me. C. C says k. Something I'll say, they will repeat it, and as they repeat it, they will then say C. C says k. So they write the letter and then they draw the line at the bottom because this is where the letter would sit on a line of paper. Okay, shake it out. The next letter, O. O says ah. Uh. Then they'll repeat, O. O says ah. Uh. And so this is the first couple of letters that we're doing. We're doing the letters C and O together in the week. But as we progress on um, throughout the um, this series of learning the letters, we will develop um, more letters that we have in our um, repertoire, and I will be mixing them up. So for example, if I said J, J says J. The children repeat, J, J says J. Now you'll notice that I put the line right through that letter. And that's because when you write the letter J or G or Y, the letters extend below that line. So you'll need to have the children writing that line where the line would be on their paper. So. This week, when we're doing this, I'm just going to use those two letters and give them a chance to get, a, um, get some practice in writing in the sand. And we're just gonna be repeating those two letters over and over again. All right, so this will be our drill for this part. And as we continue throughout this program, the drills will get longer and allow the children to have a little more time to practice different letters. Okay, boys and girls, eyes on me. C. C says k. Now you try. C. C says k. Hey, shake it out. All right, eyes on me. O. O says ah. Now you try. O. O says ah. Okay, shake it out. And boys and girls, remember when you're shaking out, we're not gonna be shaking the salt or the sand all over the place. We're gonna just do it nice and easy on the table. Keep it flat. I lifted it up there, but remember you can keep it on the table so we're not spilling it everywhere. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more, the same sounds and letters that we've been doing. Eyes on me. Oh. O says ah. Now you try. O. O says ah. Good job. Shake it out. And the last one. C. C says k. Now you try. C. C says k. Hello, boys and girls. I'm going to be reading the story K Corduroy to you. As you're reading this, I want you to be listening for the K, -k C sound that you hear at the beginning of words. As you hear a word that begins with the K, -k C sound, give a thumbs up. All right. You can pause this video if you need to or go back and listen to see if you hear those sounds. K, -k C. C says K. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things. But no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. 
Oh, Mommy, she said. Look, there's a very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much money already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I had lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Oops, there we go. Quite by accident, he stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled into a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied right down, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws and pop! Off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang! Into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was something else awake in the store. The night watchman was going on his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arms and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning and there looking at him with a wide warm smile was the same little girl he had seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I saved in my piggy bank and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end. So, boys and girls, I want you to be thinking about those C sounds. But I also am going to give you another C word, k -k character. I want you to think about the character of Corduroy. 
And what kind of person, or actually what kind of a bear, was this character? So we know that we could describe him. It was described that he was a fuzzy bear, he had fuzzy ears, and he's wearing green overalls. But what else could you tell me about him? What did he act like? What do you think he thought about? How did he, um, how do you think he felt about Lisa? How would you feel if you were Corduroy? All right, boys and girls, let's keep thinking about the letter C and looking for it all around you. Thank you.